Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We welcome you and we love you. Even more so, Jesus loves you. This evening, we'll invite everybody in-house and online. Go ahead and press that share button. Share this with your friends, your family. Let's saturate Dallas with the word of God, saints. This evening, he reminds us in Psalm chapter 95, it says, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms to him in praise. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. So we invite everybody in-house and online. Stand with us if you can't stand. Raise your arms with us as we worship his, his name this evening. And Father God, we come before you. We praise you, Father God. We worship you. We come before you, Father God, as your word says, in trembling and awe, Father God, glorifying your holy name, Father God. We proclaim from the highest of highs and the lowest valleys, Father God, that you, you are the God of creation you are the God of yes and amen father God you tell us in your word father that no mountains too high no valley nowhere where we can go that is too dark too far to do uh, far away from you to for you to find us father God we praise you this evening we worship you father God and we thank you father God for finding us in our darkness and bringing us into your glorious light and we pray that this word this service our service to you glorifies you and it helps to bring your people into your glorious light as well father God thank you father God thank you father Father God. You deserve all praise, Father God. So we praise you. We reverence you on high, Father Lord, for you are a holy God, Father Lord. And we thank you, Father God, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Father Lord. We worship you, Lord. Have your way, Father Lord. Have your way in this service, Lord. We pray for all our online guests tonight. We pray a special power that will be infiltrated into their heart. A special power of heaven that will manifest healing in their hearts tonight. God has a word for you tonight. So let us praise him, saints. Let us worship him, saints. Let us glorify his holy name, saints. Oh, we thank you, Father God, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Father God, Lord. We know, Father, Lord, for you are all spirit, Father, Lord. For you are all God, Father God, Lord. For you are mighty, Father God, Lord. And we worship a mighty king tonight, Father. We reverence a mighty king tonight, Lord. For we know, Father, that your mighty hand, Father, rules over all nations and this world, Lord. For you created all things, Father. So we submit under your mighty hand tonight, Father. We submit under your mighty rule tonight, Father. We thank you, Father God, Lord. We thank you for your kingdom, Father God, Lord. For your kingdom is the order of heaven, Father God, Lord. Is the order of heaven here on earth, Father God. Oh, Lord, as there is an order in heaven, there's an order here on earth through the kingdom, through your kingdom, Father, for which you have called us. Thank you, Father, Lord, for directing us and for calling us, Father, Lord, for calling us to a, a higher calling, Father God, Lord. So we thank you, Father God, Lord, for your Bible says, Father God, Lord, that many are called, but few 
are chosen, Father. Many are called, but few are chosen, Lord. And that is because not many want to submit to your order. For, Lord, I pray today, Father God, Lord, that your word goes forth to penetrate the hearts, the hearts of the people, Father God, Lord, that they will submit all to you, Father God, Lord. They will submit everything to you, Father, Lord, that they will acknowledge you in all ways, Father God, Lord, and they will not lean on their own understanding, Father God, Lord, but they will trust in you. They will worship you. They will praise you. So I praise, I praise you today, Lord. Worship you tonight, Father. Let us worship him, saints. Worship him right where you're at. Raise up your arms and praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. Glorify his holy name. Because one day he will come back. And he is coming back as a warrior king. He is coming back for his remnant. He is coming back for the servants that gave it all on the line. He is coming back. And we worship you today. Lord, I pray, Father God, Lord, that you'll fill us up with your precious oil, Father God, Lord. Fill up our vessels, Father God, Lord, that our lamps can burn, Father God, Lord. They can burn, Father, Lord. And wait on you. Thank you, Father God. We worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you today, Father Lord. We want to hear your voice, Father Lord. We want to hear your voice, Father God, Lord. We want to hear you, Father. We want more of you, Father Lord. So I pray tonight, Father Lord, that the word that goes forth will help your people, Lord, will help your people discern, discern the true voice of God. Help discern your mighty power, Lord. I pray, Father, that this word will go forth with power and might, with power and might penetrating the hearts of conviction, piercing through the Spirit. Oh, Lord, we need your help tonight, Father, Lord. We need your power tonight, Father, Lord. We need your wisdom tonight, Father, Lord. We need your knowledge tonight, Father, Lord. We need your presence tonight, Father, Lord. Pray, Father, that you will show up, Lord. You show up in a mighty way, Father. We thank you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, Father God, Lord. We worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth, Lord. We worship you. We will stand on your word, Lord, and nothing else, because nothing else matters but your word. For your word says that your word will last the test of times when all things will come collapse, when everything is gone. But your word, your word will still be here, Father, Lord. Father God, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your wisdom, Lord. We thank you, Father, Lord, for the revelations. We thank you for the rain of words, Father God, Lord. We pray tonight, Father, Lord. We pray, Father, Lord, that you'll give us some deep revelations through your word, Father God, Lord. Through the mighty, powerful word, Father, Lord. Through the anointed word, Father God, Lord. So we pray the Holy Spirit down, Father, Lord. Wash us, Father God, Lord. Wash us from the, the, the worries of this world. 
wash us, Father God, Lord, from all things, Father God, Lord, from any parasite, doubt, worry, anger, confusion. Wash us clean, Father, Lord, so we can get a deeper revelation of your word, Lord. We want to hear you tonight through your word, Father, Lord. So we thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. Have your way, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And we all say amen and amen and amen, amen. So welcome, welcome all our online viewers. We love you. We thank you for tuning in with us tonight for our Wednesday uh, service. God has a word for you. God has a word. There is no coincidence why you tuned in tonight. There is no coincidence because God has a word for you. God has a word. And God wants to help us tonight. God wants to help us through his word to discern the voice of God. And we're going to break some things down through scripture. See, God wants to help us discern the voice of God. Everybody can be seated right now. God wants to help us. He wants to help us to discern the voice of God. And did you know God still speaks today? God still speaks to his people and if somebody says to you that God does not speak no more, and that was only in the Old Testament, in the biblical times, let me tell you something. Then why does it say in Scripture, in John 10, 27, it says, my sheep. It says, my sheep. That means us as well. My sheep hear my voice, and I will know them. It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I will know them, and they will follow me. That tells me God still speaks. God still speaks to his people. And today, we are going to discern the voice of God. See, he wants, he wants a relationship with you. Everybody in house, he wants a relationship with you. And that relationship requires communication. It requires some communication. It requires a level of communication. But we also know that there are more voices in the world. We know there are more voices in the world and, and there are voices of others there are voices right our thoughts and the devil's voice come on somebody we're going to be brought up on game tonight see your life today is a result of the voice you hear and obey your life today right now is a result of the voice you hear and obey. Come on, somebody. Come on. So what voice are we hearing? What voice are we hearing today? Because our life is the result of the voice you hear and obey. See, when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, remember that? Remember that story in the beginning of the Bible, right? When God put Adam and Eve in the garden, he gave them one commandment. He gave them one commandment, right? And that was the word of God. One commandment, right? In Genesis 3.10, it says, So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. This is Adam talking because I was naked and I hid myself, right? So Adam knew the voice of God. Adam knew the voice of God. And because he was disobedient, right? Adam lost the paradise, right? Because of his disobedience. And we went over this a couple of studies 
a prior, right? That Adam was disobedient, Eve was deceived. There's a big difference. Adam was not deceived. Adam was disobedient to the word of God. Eve was deceived, right? Eve was deceived, and they, and they liked to, to tear Eve apart, right? But let me tell you something. She was deceived by the devil, and a lot of us have been deceived as well, right? So we cannot sit there and put the blame. We know how it is to be deceived. Eve was deceived. She was not disobedient. She was deceived. Adam was disobedient, and Adam lost paradise. See, it's not only about hearing God's voice, but it's also obeying God's voice. Check this out. Look at we all know that that Jesus, right? He was in the in the wilderness for 40 days, right? He was in the wilderness for 40 days. And in Matthew, it says, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, it says, to be tempted by the devil. And then it said, then the devil came to him, right? We all know the devil came to him, right? And what did the devil do, right? He twisted the word of God. He twisted the word of God and tempted Jesus, right? And how did Jesus respond? He responded with the word of God. Not the twisted word of God, right? But the word of God. That's how Jesus responded. So the first thing I want to give you, the first point I want to give you how to discern the voice of God is ask yourself, does it line up with the word of God? Does it line up with the Bible? Because if it doesn't line up with the Bible, then it's not of God. It's not of God, right? In 1 John 4, 1, it says, Beloved, do not believe, what? Every spirit. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are from God. We got to be testing these. We can't just be all the time just running amok. We need to be testing every spirit, right? And how do we test every spirit? The first one is, does it align with the word of God? Because if it doesn't align with the word of God, that is not God's voice. So we need to test every spirit. Test everything we are told, right? Hold it up to the word of God. You need to hold it up to the word of God and see if it matches up. So that's one. We got to test every spirit, right? And, and, and see if it matches up to the word of God. In Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not man. So he does not lie. He is not a human. So he does not change his mind. Come on, somebody, right? Has he ever spoken and failed to act? I want you to see that. God, the word of God says God is not human. Right? He's not human. So that means God doesn't change his mind. Because God don't lie. He doesn't change. He's not wavering back and forth. If or maybe so. It is what it is. It is what it ain't. And it is what it is. There is no gray area. There is no middle ground. Right? Right? It is what it is. That's why it says, let your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes. Right? So it says, he does not lie. He is not human. So he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? No. Has he ever promised and not carried it through? He always carries it through. Every promise that he has given me, it's all come to pass. Every promise that he has given me. And I want to get into more of that as we get down, right? So we could discern the voice of God, right? So every promise, and I just want to give that because I don't want to give away the study. Every promise that God has given me, I checked it out. 
I checked it out. I just didn't leave it with myself. I checked it out. And by checking it out, every promise came to pass. Because it was spoken. It was prophesied. It was checked. It aligned with the word of God. And I want to get more into that as we go. So we could see that it checked out, right? It checked out. And God does not lie. But the devil always distorts the word of God, right? So we see that, right? We could see that when Jesus was in the wilderness. The devil always distorts the word of God to fit his agenda. That's what the devil does, to fit his agenda. When Satan tempted Eve in the garden, he said, you will not die, right? See how he, he twisted the word of God, right? He, he, he twisted it, right, and distorted it, right, to fit his agenda. That's why she was deceived, right? He said, you will not die. And when Satan tempted Jesus, he twisted the word of God again for his agenda, right? But Jesus knew how to defeat the devil, right? Jesus knew, right? And in Ephesians six seventeen, it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of what? Of God. So that means he came back with the word of God. See, the best weapon we have is to know the word of God. Then, when we are able to discern the true voice of God, right? Right? Because we, we know the word of God, right? So, so when the devil comes, try to distort things, right? We must know the true word of God. If we don't know the word of God, we are going to be duped, right? He will twist the words around, right? So we are not to go off of every wind that blows if it does not align with the word of God, right? And that's how Jesus defeated the devil. He came back with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, right? And number two, so this is number two. What does your inner witness say? To discern the, the voice of God. What does your inner witness say? That's what we should be doing. We should be checking, right? What is our, our inner witness saying? See, you, you may feel it in your soul, right? but you don't know in your spirit. Come on, somebody. You may feel it in your soul, but you don't know in your spirit. So you're always questioning things. Key indication, if you always question everything, right, that's a key indication you don't know. You don't know if it's from God. Because if you knew from it was from God, right, you wouldn't have no reason to question. Is this good stuff? Is this good stuff? So that's number two, right? What does your inner witness say, right? See, in Romans 8, 16, it says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. See, our spirit should know, right? Our spirit should know, right, if it's from God, our soul may feel it, right? We're like, yeah, I'm feeling it, right? I'm feeling it, right? In, in our soul, right? But we don't know in our spirit. See, that's a key indication, a red flag, because our spirit is connected to God's spirit, right? Our spirit is connected to God's spirit, right? So your spirit, who is the Holy Spirit, connects to and communicates with, right? So your spirit bears witness to what the Holy Spirit says. See, that's number two. How we discern if it's the voice of God. Now, number three, do you have peace about it? So if you get a word, right, 
Are you having peace? Or is there always confusion? Right? Is there always doubt? Right? Is there always this, this type of, of way that you're feeling, right? And you don't have peace about it. It may not be about, it may not be from God. In Colossians 3.15, it says, let the peace of God, let the peace of God, right, rule in your heart. So if there's a peace, right, in the situation, so first of all, if the, the word of God aligns up, right, so if the word of God aligns up, right, and then um, and, and our inner witness, right, says, right, that it is good because our inner witness is connected to the spirit of God, right? So if those two things check out, right, then, then you're in a good uh, uh, area, right? And then if you get peace, right, if a peace is in the situation, that is number three, that you are on the right track. Because we also know, as the word of God says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. So if you're not getting peace in your heart, it may not be from God, right? It may not be from God. So those are number three. Those are three things, how to discern the voice of God. And then number four, are things falling into place? Because everything's going to fall into place. If it's from God, it's going to fall into place. Right? It doesn't mean you're not on the right track. It just means you're not listening to the right voice. Right? You could be on the right track. God could send you to the right place. And you're on the right track. It's just you're not discerning the true voice of God. So the devil's going to come in to deceive you, right, to get you off track. That's his job. Just like he did with Adam and Eve. What did he do with Adam and Eve? They were on the right track. But what did he do? He came in, right, to distort the word of God, right, to distract, right? He came in and twisted the word of God. See, see, what, see what he does? And this is why we need to know the tricks of the enemy, right? And we need to know how to discern the voice of God. We need to know these things. Because if we don't know these things, then we can be setting ourselves up for failure. We can be setting ourselves up. But tonight, God wants to strengthen us. God wants to lace us up tonight. And we're going to get laced up. We're going to put our boots on, our battle boots on, and we're going to lace them up tight, right? And we're going to know the difference, right, from how the devil distorts things, right, and how the word of God, right, and to discern the voice of God, how it's supposed to line up, right? So number four is are things falling into place? All these things have to line up. Are all things falling into place? Because in Genesis 24, it says, Then he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day and show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, here I stand by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink. And I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master see if things are in chaos right if things are in chaos that is a sign it may not be from God right see things should be falling into place 
Look at what was happening right there. Things were falling into place. Even the camels were getting a drink of water. Because things were falling into place. Right? If it's from God, everything will be aligned in its place. And number five. What do your trusted mentors say? That's number five. What do your trusted mentors say? Because in Proverbs eleven fourteen it says, where there is no counsel, come on somebody, right? Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety. See, the devil wants to lie to us thinking, I got this. I know the voice of God. I'm a seasoned Christian. I've been serving for 20 years. I know, I know, I know. That's a red flag because it does not align with the word of God. See, pride is keeping you away from mentorship. Pride is keeping you thinking you know, you know, you know. Because in Proverbs eleven fourteen it says, where there is no counsel, the people will fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So are they confirming what you have been told? Are they confirming what you have been told? Or are they seeing red flags? See, when you, when you come to trust your mentors, right, and come and, and, and give them the word, right, that you feel that God is giving you, right, they're either going to confirm it or they're going to call out red flags because they're going to follow these steps. They're going to follow the word of God. Right? Every good mentor will follow the word of God. And if it's not aligning with the word of God, that is a red flag. That is a red flag, right? Now, I'm going to give you a little extra nugget. If you know it's God, you wouldn't have a problem checking it out with your mentor. You wouldn't have a problem at all. You'll be like, hey, I got a word. You'd be happy about it. Hey, I got a word. And you want to share because you know it's coming from God. But the devil's the only one that wants to keep you away from checking it out. Because he wants to keep you in his own grips. He wants to keep you away saying, I know, I know, I know. Those good old famous words I've heard thousands of times from the ones that always were outside, never had mentors, right? Because they always said, I know, I know, I know. But in Proverbs, look at in Proverbs 19, 27, it says, Seize listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. Wow. Look at what it says. The word of God says, if we seize listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. So if we start to seize from instructions, we will stray from the words of knowledge. And I want to give you one more in Acts 6, 3. Look at, what, look at what, what took place in Acts 6, 3. And this was the first church, right? The disciples needed some, some brothers, right? They needed some faithful brothers. And they went and picked seven. Seven faithful brothers. And it says in Acts 6, 3, Therefore, brethren, seek out among you seven men of good reputation. 
That's what it says. It says, seek out seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. That means, that means they, they passed through a council. They were found good. They were found good. They were connected to their mentors. That means the disciples, their mentors that were over them, found them good. Found them good. A council found them good. That they were checking it out, right? That the Holy Spirit was with them, right? That they were discerning the true voice of God. That's what it's all about. That's why we, we trust our mentors. I check out every word I get. I go check it out. I need to make sure this is confirmed. Doesn't matter how long I've been in ministry, I gotta follow the word of God. We have to follow the word of God because pride is the one that says, I've been serving from such amount of time and years. I got this, right? I got this. No, you don't. Because the word of God says, where there is no counselor, the people will fall. That's what the word of God says. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. That means we need mentors. All the days of our lives, we need people speaking into us. We need proven mentors. Just like those seven men, they were proven through a council. So I'm gonna give you one more nugget. Pick a mentor that has been proven through a council. Don't just pick anybody to speak into you. If they are not proven and you cannot trace them back, right? That's another red flag, a key indication where are they getting their mentorship from? If you cannot trace it, it's coming from somewhere, right? But it's not coming from God. Because if you can't trace it, it's not coming from God. So those are the five things men and women of God tonight is ask yourself if it lines up with the word of God. Does your inner witness say, right? Is your spirit confirming? Because your spirit is connected to God's spirit. So if it, if it has to line up with the word of God, right? Your spirit has to be confirming it, right? And there has to be peace about it, right? And then once you have peace, everything should be falling into place. And then last is check the word of God from a proven, seasoned, proven saint. Just like these seven men with good reputation. They were proven. They were full of the Holy Spirit. They went through a council and wisdom. They just didn't wake up one day and say, I got a calling. I'm just going to walk in my calling and all I need is God. Run away from those people. Run away. Because it's not of God. You need to go through a council. You need to go through the proper channels. You need to be properly discipled. You cannot just rise up in a couple of years and become a pastor. It does not work like that. You got to put in the work. You got to go through tests. You got to go through trials. You got to be proven. You got to show yourself approved. So if those things aren't lining up, we have a problem. And this is how to discern the voice of God. This is how, how we discern. And I want to give one more insight. You could be in the right place. 
But the devil is distorting everything. Now don't think just because of these things are not lining up that you are in the wrong place and you got to go here and you got to go there. The devil's the only one that is telling you that to keep you running. But let me tell you something. It is the devil that is distorting it. So all we have to do is just click the perspective, right? And start following the scriptures and start to align ourselves with the word of God, right? Start to get inner peace because if our spirit has an inner peace, a confirmation, right? And a peace and everything starts to come into place and our mentors are confirming the word of God, then we are on the right track. So I want to slow this down right now. If you haven't, if you've been having trouble and, and you could identify with five of these attributes right here if you could identify that that these things aren't taking place and you want to get realigned tonight and you want to say lord i need your help tonight i need to follow these five attributes i need to follow these five things lord lord forgive me father god lord for i fell for the distorted word of the devil to fit his agenda because he's the one that wanted to get me off track. So if you are online right now, I want you to repeat this prayer in-house if you can stand up. I want you to repeat this prayer because all of us have, have failed one place or another and God wants to help us so we can hear the voice of God. Say, Lord, Lord forgive, me, forgive me, for I did not follow these attributes. I did not follow the Word of God. Help me, Lord, so I can discern the true voice of you, Lord. Help me to discern, Father. Lord, I want to ask that you will give me wisdom and knowledge and patience tonight. Lord, I love you. I thank you for your patience and your love for me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And we all say, amen, 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 amen. So there's, a, there's somebody out there right now online that's been having a real um, trouble, been having a, 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 a real trouble and, and, and not knowing what, what, what is going on. They're, they're, in a, they're in a place and they feel, they feel that, that they're, they're out by themselves. But let me tell you, the Spirit of God, like the Word of God says, is connected to your spirit and I want to encourage you today I want to speak life into you today because if the devil has to put that much overtime OT into you well then there is an indication that you are very precious and you are very valuable that the devil wants to keep distorting the word of God. He wants to keep distracting you away from the trueness of heaven, the trueness of walking in the fullness of your calling and giftings that God has imparted in you. 
So I want to encourage you today. Stand tall. Know who you are. Say, I'm a child of God. Say, I'm created marvelously. He created me marvelously. And I will succeed and I will overcome every obstacle that the devil has thrown at me. And say, Lord, I promise I will follow your word, Lord. I will test every word, Father, Lord. I will test every situation if it does not align with the word of God. I will test to get confirmation in my spirit. I will test if I have peace about it. And if I don't have peace about it, then I know it's not of God. That it's not nobody else. That it's the devil that is lying to me. And I promise, Lord, that I will follow and look out for everything falling into place. And Lord, I promise that I will find a godly mentor and I will be humble and I will be teachable because God wants you to be teachable. He doesn't want you saying, I know, I know, I know. He wants you to be teachable, to learn new things. So say, I promise that I will follow and trust in my mentor. I will trust in my mentor that he is hearing the right things, that, that he is looking. He, 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 he is looking to confirm the word of God he is looking that I will trust that you sent the right person Lord because I know it's from you Lord because you got to remember it's all from God see the devil wants you to look at the person right God wants you to look at the God in the person God wants you to look at the Holy Spirit in the person that's why the Word of God says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers, right? In dark and heavenly places. So say, Lord, I promise, Lord, that I'll follow your word, Lord. For your word says where there is no counsel, the people will fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. Thank you for loving me, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Say, I worship you, Lord. For you are good. You are marvelous, Father, Lord. For he's good, saints. And he loves us all. So we thank you, Father God, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your mighty power. We thank you for your goodness tonight, Lord. We thank you for the revelation, Lord. We thank you for, for the revelation through your word, Lord, that will help us, Father, Lord, to discern, Lord, your voice, Father, Lord. And if it's not aligning with your word of God, Lord, we will know it's not from you, Father, Lord. So we thank you, Father God, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Have your way, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And we all say amen and amen and amen. So right now we're going to transition to our tithes and offerings. So please give a warm welcome to Pastor Catherine. Amen and amen. So at this time, yes, everybody can be seated. And uh, as well, we do have a few announcements before we get to tithes and offerings. So uh, for you men out there, we do have tomorrow night our men's Bible study. 
our men's Bible study tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on Zoom and on Facebook. If you want to join the Zoom, anybody online, go ahead and message us, and we'll get you the information. If you just want to join through Facebook, then go ahead and join us through Facebook tomorrow night at 7 p.m. right here on Chapel of Change Dallas. Women, on Friday night at 7 p.m., we have our Women's Abide Bible Study on Zoom and on Facebook as well. Again, ladies, if you don't have the information, you're online, send us a message. We will get you that information for the Zoom. If you want to join us just on the live, go ahead and just join us and get fed. Saturday. Saturday, we are having a youth fundraiser. We are having a yard sale. So, uh, ladies, gentlemen, come on out. Support our youth so we can send, we can bring them in for summer camp. Get them off the street. Get them, get them the, the word of God. Feed them spiritually, physically, in any way we can. Amen. And we are also going to have a prayer booth that day. So if anybody needs prayer, you just need extra prayer to get you through the Saturday. Come on down. We want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. We're here to support you in everything that you have. Sunday, we're going to be right back here at 10 a.m. on Chapel of Change Dallas, as well as in-house. We'll put the address in the comments. Go ahead and come and join us for a time of fellowship, the word, worship, a time of prayer, a time of just gathering together as a win in one accord. On Monday night, we invite you to tune in right here as well, Chapel of Change Dallas, for our night of spiritual warfare. And we will be right back here at 7.15 p.m. next Wednesday for another Bible study. Go ahead and join us right here, Chapel of Change Dallas, in-house. And we will put the, the times, the locations in the comments. Today, he reminded me of a, a scripture in uh, 2 Corinthians, which says that you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or, re or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. He's saying here that when we give... When we give, he is faithful to return to us what we give 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. He will increase in us. And he doesn't, want, he doesn't want us to give because, oh, my neighbor is giving. I have to give. He doesn't want you to feel like you have to give. We don't have to give anything. We get to partner with our Lord in order to bring his kingdom here on earth. We get to partner with our God to bring the kingdom down. We get to do this. We don't have to do anything. We are honored. I have the honor and privilege to stand here and say that I get to serve him every day. I get to partner with his kingdom in everything that I do. And I pray that everybody here as well is able to say, I get to. I get to, and I have the honor and privilege to do so. I am blessed to be here with all of you, and this evening, we want to lift up this tithe and, tithe and offering, and Father God, we come before you this evening, we praise your holy name, Father. We praise you, and we ask you that as we gather this tithe and offering, Father God, that we continue, Father, to to seek you, Father God, in all things. And remember that everything comes from you, Father God. We would have nothing if you did not bless us, Father God, if, you, if we not, did not have your blessings, Father. We praise you this evening. We worship you this evening, Father God. And we thank you, Father, for everything you have done in, through, for, and with us, Father. We ask you to continue to increase in us, around us, Father God. We ask you that you would fill us up so we can overflow in blessings upon others, Father. And we thank you, Father God, that you bless those who are able to give, those who are not able to give, Father God. Because as your word says, you look at the heart of man and the state of their heart and the state in which they give, Father God. And that is what you judge, Father. Father, not how much, not how little, the heart behind the offering, Father God, is what you care about the most and you honor. We praise you this evening. We worship you this evening, Father God. And we thank you, Father, for everything, Father God. And in Jesus' mighty, mighty name, we say amen and amen. And as uh, I release uh, Sister Olga to uh, pick up the offering, I'm going to ask uh, you to help me welcome back up Pastor Simon as he gives our closing blessing. Praise God. Praise God. So right now it's custom that we pronounce a blessing. So everybody online, if you can't stand up, just put your arms out and just receive the blessing of the Lord. 
and everybody in house, please put your hands out in a receptive posture to receive the blessing of the Lord. We got to press in, saints. We got to press into the things of God. If you want change in your life, you got to press in. You got to press into new things. You got to press into all things, saints. So press in and receive all that God has for you. In the name of the Father, for his never-ending love for us. In the name of the Son who died on the cross and shed his blood for our iniquities and rose again on the third day. In the name of the Holy Spirit that convicts us, that is connected to our spirit, that helps us to discern the true voice of God. So, Lord, I pray, Father, that you will help us, Lord. Help us to discern, Father, Lord. Help us to follow your word, Father, Lord. Help us today, Father, Lord. Lord, we don't want to be deceived, Father. We don't want a, a distorted word, Lord. We want the true rhema of word, the true real deal. Lord, I pray, Father, Lord. I pray that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, Lord, will help us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, and we all say amen and amen and amen. So we love you, saints. Tune on in every uh, Wednesday for our midweek service. God has a word for you every Wednesday and also Sunday at 10 o'clock, 3930 Boulder Drive, Dallas, Texas 75233 at 10 a.m. God has a word for you. Come as you are. Come as you are. You don't need to get ready. You don't need to get ready just to meet God. You come as you are. God loves you as you are. God wants to fill you up with this power. God wants to transform you. God wants to heal you. God wants to give you joy, joy again in your life. God wants to bring you into new heights and new dimensions. God wants you to go from glory to glory. And this only happens through the Holy Spirit. This this only happens through the Word of God and the presence of God. Because the Word of God says where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. There is freedom. So God wants to set you free tonight. Come as you are. Come as you are. Remember, He loves you. He loves you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So God bless, saints. God bless.